Hi, my name is Joseph Ally. Welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about how to completely destroy and get over contrary and negative thoughts. So first of all, if you've never checked out my channel before, definitely subscribe to get step-by-step -step instructions in a systematic way, tested thousands and thousands of times on how to manifest exactly what you want. Not hope manifesting, but systematic, deliberate manifesting. So if you're watching this video, then you're probably trying to manifest something and having a hard time controlling your thoughts. The idea is that our thoughts create reality. Our imagination or awareness in fullness creates reality. So anything that ever enters into our subconscious mind will manifest on the screen of space. And the idea is that we imagine what we want and then we try not to have contradictory or negative thoughts during the meantime and drop the desire or the imaginal act so that we can allow it to ripen and flower. And then fully and finally, we will end up at the end desire. So I need to go over a little bit of information as far as what thoughts actually are, how they work, and then um, a story to tie it all together. And then that way we can kind of get an idea um, so we don't have to continuously battle and correct our thoughts, which is oftentimes a losing battle. But there is a solution. There's an absolute solution to completely get rid of those thoughts entirely so that we no longer have to battle them. Because the battle against anything is the battle against the nature of things. So first of all, I'd like to talk about the origin of thoughts or where thoughts actually come from. And this idea stems back to how our how we are moving automatically every single day. So our days that we encounter are generally predestined or preordained by our thoughts and imaginal acts generally from the day before, at least beforehand completely. And to illustrate this, I'd like to give you an example. So the other day I was reading a book. Um, it was not a manifesting book. It was a book called on the shortness of life by Seneca. It was written about 2000 years ago and the idea is just about how we should um, value our time. And in this book, it talks about, it asks the question, um, if you could relive your life, would you or would you modify it? And so it's a, obviously a philosophical question. Nevertheless, it was intriguing and valuable so I finished the book and whatever. So the next day I was, um, I had an idea. I was thinking about something that Neville Goddard had um, lectured before and it was on a type of technique that he used. And so I searched, that was the thought that I had in my mind. And so I searched up the lecture, I found it and I read it. And mind you, I was looking for a technique. I found the lecture. And when I found the lecture, the second sentence in the lecture said, um, if you could relive your life every, uh, again, would you? And now the reason that this is, um, so first of all, this is a synchronicity. This was a, a synchronicity is a manifestation of a thought. And so the reason that this is important is because it shows something extremely critical in, in terms of how the world works entirely. So after I had read that book, from Seneca on the shortness of life where it quoted that same quote that Neville had um, spoken in his lecture, I had the idea to find a technique by Neville. It was completely unrelated, entirely unrelated. So I searched around and I finally found it. I found the key phrase, but when I read that lecture, it had the manifestation which was the quote reiterated by Neville. Now it wasn't a specific quote from the book, but nevertheless, it was the exact same contents and almost the exact same phrase. What this means is that, and this is with every single manifestation generally that unfolds, we set things up in advance. We imagine, we impress our subconscious mind. So when I read that book the night before, I had impressed my subconscious mind with something. The next day I was given a thought. The thought was to find a technique. It was completely unrelated to the book before, but nevertheless, it was a thought. And when I followed that thought and took that action, I wound up having the manifestation from the day before. So what this tells us is that we will be directed 
we will have some impulse to do something, but really it's leading us to the manifestation. That's how our manifestations work. When we imagine finding $10 on the street, we will accidentally make a left-hand turn and that's where we find it. But our goal was just to go get a cup of coffee or that's the idea, get a cup of coffee and you look down and you find the $10. We, the mind feeds us information, our thoughts, our manifestations. And that's the key point I'm trying to drive home here is that our very thoughts themselves, a lot of the time, are manifestations. So when it comes to contrary thoughts, right? So say we're imagining to manifest a specific person, but there's thoughts that are popping up in our head continuously, negative, contrary thoughts. And then the idea and what's commonly said is to just completely combat them and replace them over and over with the idea that we will, I guess, convince ourselves or to build the habit to not think that way anymore. But that's, um, it, that is to go against the very nature of things because as we know in manifesting, we cannot force something to happen unless it has first been imagined. So if something is manifesting and we're just moving it out of the way, it's gonna keep manifesting. And what's even worse is that when the contrary thought comes up, we often have a negative reaction to it. And so a reaction just impresses it upon the subconscious mind again. And then it manifests again and again and again. So then we just have this psychotic infinite cycle of continuously battling against the negative thoughts and replacing them with positive thoughts. Now I wanna be clear though, we do not want to entertain negative thoughts because because thoughts manifest, right? Fleeting thoughts, if you write the lists that I recommend you do, which is every morning write a list of 10 things, stream of consciousness style of like, I receive a free cup of coffee, an old friend texts me, um, anything on and on, it rains for five minutes, on and on and on, what you'll realize, even without imagining any of these things, and you just writing them down as they are, one after the other, as if it's a matter of fact, you'll realize that every single one, it may not happen right now, it may not happen today, but it will, every single one will manifest. So it shows the power of our thoughts. So we don't want to entertain negative thoughts. But that leads to kind of the idea of fear-based things, right? So first of all, I want to help get relieve some stress, okay? So we don't want to react against negative thoughts. We don't want to contemplate negative thoughts, but I want to give you a little bit of peace of mind. So when we are imagining we are deliberately creating a scene or we're deliberately specifying or affirming or having an inner conversation about something planned out deliberately about what we want as if we already have it. So it's a crystal clear way of manifesting. Fear, what is fear? When you have fear, are you examining the thoughts continuously and deliberately planning them out and spending a lot of time purposely thinking about them? The answer is always no. We're running away from them. We're not thinking clearly about them. They're often a very dispersed way of thinking, right? And so they're a very dispersed way or an inaccurate rate way to manifest. So we, we should relax when we have a negative thought instead of freaking out and replacing it continuously because when we freak out, we react and we manifest it again. But whereas an imaginal act is like a magnified way to impress the subconscious mind, fear-based thoughts are really scattered. And so the, uh, we often see fear does manifest in certain cases if we completely and deliberately get lost in the fear. But if we have it and that's it and we're scattered and running away from it, the idea is that it's not going to be a crystal clear manif manifestation. So don't freak out. But so what's the solution then? If it's not to continuously replace the thought over and over and over again, if it's not to react, then what do we do? So here's the idea, right? The idea that our thoughts themselves are manifestations is proof that there's something else going on behind the scenes. There's something manifesting those thoughts. So ask yourself, have you had fears, doubts, insecurities, jealousies, especially when it comes to specific people, but even with money, um, anything, if there's some type of belief in your mind I'm not good enough, I can't hold on to money, everyone leaves me, money is hard to get. Those beliefs themselves, those assumptions execu executing as a blueprint in your mind are the thing that are manifesting those thoughts, right? So the, the key here 
is to create new assumptions, which if true would prove that you no longer have those thoughts. So the solution then becomes um, creating assumptions which wipe out those thoughts, right? So it's not to constantly battle, it's not to react, it's to create assumptions which if true, as I said, will mean that those thoughts never would exist in the first place. So for example, if there's an, a blueprint executing which is um, people leave me, they don't love me, or money's hard to get, or I never get money, or I lose everything that I have, but yet we're trying to manifest this object of our desire, which is a specific person or a sum of money, the problem is, is the contrary thoughts are gonna continuously pop up because that belief pops up. It's like having a cup and you're trying to fill it with this big manifestation, but on the bottom there's a hole. So we gotta patch that hole, and the way to do that is by creating statements and then imagining them or having conversations about them as if they're true. So for instance, if the problem is we're having thoughts about fears and insecurities and doubts, we create statements such as I, uh, so if it's about a specific person, for example, we create a statement that would say, I am extremely confident that my, um, everyone that I'm in love with is in love with me, or there's something so special about me that um, there is no competition against me and everyone that I am attracted to is attracted to me and in love with me. And we can go on and on and on, but the idea is to specify these beliefs, beliefs that if true would mean that those thoughts could no longer exist. And we write those down in the same way that we write our lists. And if you want to go even deeper, then you can imagine having a conversation with a friend explaining those things. Now, it may not happen instantly. Those thoughts, those negative contrary thoughts may not happen right now, but it plants the seed. And the seed grows and manifests and a bridge of incidents will unfold and you will no longer have those contrary thoughts. As long as you create assumptions which would cancel those out. And that's the key here. And you can create as many as you want, 10, 20, 30, 50. Sometimes I will do 50, 60, 70, uh, surrounding any given um, desire as if the desire is the target and then you're filling in all the things around it so that those negative thoughts vanish. You'll no longer have to go through that infinite cycle, which I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, where you're infinitely battling, switching back and forth. It doesn't work. We have to go to the root, as we discussed in the story earlier about how I was moved automatically to experience the manifestation, which means the thoughts that were being fed to me were from the manifestation of the seed that I planted the day before. So do this and be free. Create them and Allow those thoughts to be removed and you'll no longer have to battle against the way things work. So I hope this was helpful. I really hope this was helpful. This alone really changed everything for me. If you like this, definitely subscribe, hit the bell icon, go to the website sovereignmind.com slash register to check out my email list because I send a lot of cool stuff out there and stay tuned for more. Thank you so much for watching.